Come on, come on, let's go. So, bro, how was your day? Behave, dude. You're 24. What are you doing? Huh? So, bro, did you enjoy your time? Yes, man. What about you? Yeah, I've been enjoying it too. What is wrong with you? The sun's been too hot today, bro. Yeah. It's okay, bro, let me go wait there. Come join me, okay? Hey. What's up, Clary? All good? Yeah, bro. Everything's been great. Except for the sand. It's too hot today. Mm, yeah, the sun's been brutal today. It's been what, bro? Half an hour since noon, but it's still hot. That's what sand does. Holds the heat really well. Useless sand, bro. Hey, it's not useless. Actually, there's this town in Finland that uses sand to store energy. They're gonna find a battery that's gonna change the world. Wait, how, bro? Yeah, that's called a uh, sand battery. It's oh. nothing but a large cylinder. They fill it up with sand and heat it up to 600 degrees Celsius. The heat gets trapped for months. Oh, really? Yeah. During cold days, they use that heat to warm up the buildings or generate steam out of it or generate electricity out of it. Okay, bro, but they could have just used lithium, right? Or some other material. Why did they use sand? Lithium is not available on all parts of the world. And also, lithium is costly. But on the other hand, sand is cheap, easily available. So they chose sand. A lot of people around don't know about it, bro. Why don't we build something out of it? I'm already working on it. You go collect some sand, I'll explain it to you at our place. That's cool, bro. Let me go get some sand. <laughs> Let's start to build a setup. Here I have a container filled with sand. Now I'm gonna heat this sand and convert that heat into electricity. So let's begin. But before that, here I have two wires. One is a copper wire and the other is a nichrome wire. Copper is a great conductor of electricity. Nichrome is also a conductor of electricity, but not as great as copper. Now if I connect these two wires at one end and connect the free ends to a multimeter and start heating this junction, you can actually see a voltage reading in the multimeter. Guess what? As the temperature increases, the voltage increases. Let's see. The moment I remove the heat source, the voltage drops. If I bring it again, the voltage increases. There is no actual electrical supply connected to these wires. Then how is this happening? At the molecular level, it looks something like this. Inside the metal, there are free electrons at normal temperature. They are calm and barely move. But when we provide heat at one end, the electrons start moving to the colder side, creating a potential difference. Imagine walking on a sand. We can't bear the heat, so we run, right? The same way the heat makes the electrons vibrate like crazy and they rush towards the colder side. Here, the electrons move faster in copper from hot end to cold end, creating a positive potential at the hot end. Then a negative potential is created in the nichrome wire due to its internal properties and hence the slow movement of electrons happens. Let's say there's a voltage of plus 5 developed on the copper wire and minus 2 on the nichrome wire. So the total sum of voltage will be 3 volts which causes the electrons to move. Now when we place the load here the electrons will move from the hot end to the cold end in the copper wire and from the hot end of the nichrome wire to its cold end and this will keep continuing. Now let's start to heat up the sand. Perfect. Here we have a few Peltier modules. This Peltier module has a junction similar to this copper and nichrome wire. When one side of this Peltier module is exposed to heat and the other side is kept cold, the free electrons start to move from the hot end to the cold end, producing electricity. Now let's connect the Peltier modules. Now let's add some thermal paste and then place the Peltier over it. Then add some on top as well. Now let's place the other heat sink over this. Now it's time to place the module on the sand. Let me connect a multimeter and check the reading. Let's heat it again. See, as the heat increases, 
the voltage increases. Now when I place an LED here, see, it glows. In a similar way, these guys from Finland set up a sand battery, which is actually a huge container that can hold up to 100 tons of sand. Then heated the sand with excess energy to be used later by the same process which we saw earlier. But here's the twist. The sand battery doesn't directly create electricity like the Peltier module what we just saw. It's not an electric battery, it's a thermal battery. Instead of storing electricity, it stores heat. And this heat can be used in many ways. But is it perfect? Not yet. Sand batteries are evolving. Their efficiency isn't as high as other systems. Right now, they are perfect for heating, but not electricity. But they are cheap, low maintenance, and full of potential. With further development, we could see entire towns powered by sand. Imagine using desert sand in sunny regions, or even industrial waste sand. The possibilities are exciting. So what do you think? Could sand batteries be the future of energy storage? Can we make this work in India? Drop your views in the comments. I'll see you in another one. Until then, this is Rakesh signing off.